empirical distributions. On the topic of empirical distribution, basically in data science and statistics, the empirical means observed. Empirical distributions are distributions of observed data, such as data in random samples. In this section, we're going to generate data and see what the empirical distribution look like. Our setting is a sample experiment, rolling a die multiple times and keeping track of which face appears. The array die contains the number of spots on the faces of a die. All the numbers appear exactly once, as we are assuming that the die is a fair die. Let's take a look at our line of code. Import numpy as np, np.a range, starting from 1, stopping at 7, with step size 1, is going to be our variable die. If we take a look at this, we're going to get an array, including numbers starting at 1, then jumping to 2, 3, 4, 5, and it stops at 6. A third die has 6 sides. So as you remember, numpy arrange function creates an array of integers for us. A probability distribution. The histogram below helps us visualize the fact that every face appears with probability of one out of six. We say that the histogram shows the distribution of probabilities over all possible faces. Since all the bars represent the same percent chance, the distribution is called a uniform distribution on the integers one through six. Let us import important libraries, import numpy as mp, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. We're gonna define the die faces one to six. So np.a range, one, seven, with step size one, is our variable die. Let us define the beans to visualize the distribution. np.a range, 0.5, comma, 7.5, with step size one, which is our beans. Now let us plot the histogram. We're gonna add the labels and the title, and this is our visualization of the histogram. As you can see, all of these bars have the exact same height, which is showing the same probability. On the vertical line, we have the probability distribution and the horizontal line are die faces. Sampling from a population. The law of averages also holds when the random sample is drawn from individuals in a large population. What do we mean by that? As an example, we will study a population of flight delay times. The table United contains data from United Airlines domestic flights departing from San Francisco in summer of 2015. The data are made publicly available. So you're gonna have access to the data easily. There are 13,825 rows, each corresponding to a flight. The columns are the date of the flight, the flight number, the destination, airport code, and the departure delay time in minutes. Some delay times are negative. Those flights left early. Okay, we have all the clarification that we need. Let us import important libraries, import pandas as pd. Let us read the CSV file, pd.read underscore CSV. And this is just the directory of the file on my computer. I call this data frame to be united. Now let us display the data. United.head shows the first few rows. So basically this is what we see. Some of the information are available here. 
out of 13,825 rows, this is what we have and we can analyze the data. And as we saw, the delay negative three, it means that the flight left early. One flight departed 16 minutes early and one was 580 minutes late. The other delay time were almost all between negative 10 minutes and 200 minutes. It seems like we have an outlier here, which is 580. Let's get the minimum delay time. The minimum delay time is basically negative 16. Our line of code united with column delay that minimum basically help us to find the minimum delay time. This selects the delay column from the data frame that minimum is the function that returns the minimum value in the delay column. You can also find the maximum delay time. Set the maximum delay to be united, which is your data frame, and the column and dot max. This is our outlier that we mentioned, which is 580. More on the syntax and the detail of the code. The data frame, and then you pass in the column name, and then you use the maximum function. Very good. Let us import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and plot a histogram of the delay times. So you have plt.hist, and then you have your data frame with the column delay. You set up the beans to be an array starting from negative 10 and stopping at 201 with step size 10. Very good. So if you visualize this plot, we get the following. This is the distribution of flight delay times. So as you can see, this is skewed to the right-hand side. As we discussed in previous slide, the outlier is located on the right-hand side. Empirical distribution of a statistic. The law of averages implies that with high probability, the empirical distribution of a large random sample will resemble the distribution of the population from which the sample was taken. The resemblance is visible in two histograms. The empirical histogram of a large random sample is likely to resemble the histogram of the population itself. So for example, let's take a random sample of a thousand flights, united that sample, n is a thousand, and the random state is going to be 42. Let's plot our histogram of samples of size a thousand. As you can see, this plot is very similar to the plot that we did in the previous slide. They are not exactly the same, but they are very similar. So united that sample n equals to a thousand, this part of the code selects a random sample of a thousand rows or flights from the data frame united. The dot sample method is used in pandas to randomly select a specified number of items from the data frame. In this case, you want a thousand flights. When you set random underscore state equals to 42, this parameter is used to set the seed for the random number generator. By specifying a value like 42, you guarantee that the random sampling is reproducible. This means that every time you run this code with the same random underscore state, you'll get the same sample of a thousand flights. If you don't set random underscore state, each time you run this code, you might get a different random sample which can lead to variability in your results or analysis. So let's discuss parameter. 
Frequently, we are interested in numerical quantities associated with a population. Parameters are numerical values that describe the population. In a population of voters, what percent will vote to candidate A? Another question can be, in a population of Facebook users, what is the largest number of Facebook friends that the user has? In a population of United Flights, what is the median departure delay? So these are the types of questions that we are interested in answering. Numerical quantities associated with a population are called parameters. For the population of flights in the United, we know the value of the parameter median delay. Let's run the code and see what is that value. Our data frame, United, has column delay, and we want to find the median of it. So the median underscore delay is going to be 2. Now let us calculate the number of flights with a delay of two minutes or less. So our line of code united, and we pass in the data frame united with column delay, and then we compare it with value two. If it's less than or equal to two, this basically filters the data frame united to include only the rows where the delay column is less than or equal to two minutes. Well, dot shape zero, this gives the number of rows in the filtered data frame, which corresponds to the number of flights with a delay of two minutes or less. Now let us calculate the total number of flights. It's basically united dot shape and pass in zero, which basically retrieves the total number of flights in the original data frame. Now let us calculate the proportion. The number of delayed flights divided by total flights is the proportion of delayed flights. This number is about 50%. So half of all flights left no more than two minutes after their scheduled departure time. That is a very short delay. Now let us talk about numerical characteristic for a sample or a statistic. In many situations, we will be interested in figuring out the value of an unknown parameter. For this, we will rely on data from a large random sample drawn from the population itself. A statistic is any number computed using the data in a sample. The sample median, therefore, is a statistic. So whatever you take from the sample and do the computation, the proportion, the mean, the median, and so on, are sample statistic. Remember that sample underscore a thousand contains a random sample of a thousand flights from the United. The observed value of a sam sample median is, so what are we going to do? We're going to calculate the median delay time for the sample of a thousand flights. So in that case, if we look at the median delay sample, it's also two. Our sample, one set of a thousand flights, gave us one observed value of the statistic. This raises an important problem of inference. So remember that we are using sample to make inferences about population. The statistic could have been different. A fundamental consideration is using any statistic based on random sample, which is the sample could have come out differently. And therefore, the statistic could have come out differently too. So in that case, we're going to use confidence interval. This is a topic that we're going to talk later. Suppose we take a random sample of a thousand flights. So in this case, we have united dot sample set n to be a thousand and random state to be 42. 
United dot sample with parameter a thousand. This randomly select a thousand flights from the data frame United. The random underscore state, as we mentioned before, guarantee the sample can be reproduced in future runs. Now let us calculate the median delay sample. Sample underscore a thousand. We pass in the delay column and we calculate the median. So if you run this line of code, what do you get? What is the result of the following line of code? Is it the same as two? Is it different from two? Now simulating a statistic. We will simulate the sample median using the steps we set up in an earlier chapter when we started studying simulation. We can replace the sample size of a thousand by any other sample size and the sample median by any other statistic. In the very first step, decide which statistic to simulate. We have already decided that we are going to simulate the median of a random sample of size a thousand from the population of flight delays. Step two, define a function that returns one simulated value of the statistic. So we're going to draw a random sample of size 1000 and compute the median of that sample. Let's import important libraries, import pandas as pd, import numpy as np, and load the data set. Decide which statistic to simulate. We are simulating the median of the random sample of size 1000 taken from the population. So define your function random underscore sample underscore median. What does it do? It draw a random sample of size 1000 and compute the median of the delay column. It returns sample underscore 1000 delay this is your column and it calculates the median out of it now you can run an example for example random underscore sample underscore median and set it to be equal to the simulated median and if you print the simulated median delay for sample of size a thousand you're going to see the simulated median delay for sample of size 1000, which is 2. So that's how you simulate a statistic. Let us go to the step 3. Now decide how many simulated values to generate. Suppose you want to generate 5000 repetitions. In step four, we're going to use for loop to generate an array of simulated values. So let us start by creating an empty array in which to collect our results. We will then set up for loop to generate all the simulated values. The body of the loop would consist of generating one simulated value of the sample median and appending it to our collection array. The simulation takes a noticeable amount of time to run. This is because it's performing 5,000 repetitions of the process of drawing a sample of size 1,000 and computing its median. So it's a lot of sampling and repeating. Import pandas as pd, numpy as np, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. As usual, let us read our CSP file. Define our function to compute the median of a random sample of a size 1000. So define random underscore sample underscore median and return data frame united. We're taking the column delay and we are taking the sample of size 1000 and calculating the median from it. In step three, decide how many simulated values to generate. We want to generate 5,000 values. 
And step four, create an empty array to collect the results. So the median, set the medians to be mp.empty num underscore simulations. Now use a for loop to generate an array of simulated values for i in range and pass in number underscore simulations median open close bracket i to be set to random underscore sample underscore median. Basically your loop runs num underscore simulations items calling the random underscore sample underscore median function each time and storing the results in the median array. The simulation is done. All 5,000 simulated sample medians are collected in the array medians. Perfect. So this is what we have sample medians, some of them are 2, some of them are 2.5, and you get different values in between. We can visualize this as well using a histogram. And the histogram showing that the median is almost centered at 2. A review of sampling from a population. So let us take a look at the following code. This code simulates rolling a die by creating a table of possible outcomes and then randomly selecting faces from that table. It helps us of rolling the same face multiple times. So import numpy as mp, import pandas as pd, define faces of a die, np.a range 1 to 7 and set it to be faces and then create a data frame with the faces of the die pd.data frame and the face is basically faces. Remember that np.a range 1 and 7 creates a numpy array containing the integer 1 through 6 representing the faces of the die and then when you are setting up pd.data frame faces, a panda data frame is created to represent the die where each row corresponds to a face. Now we're going to take a sample size to be three. And then we're going to take this data frame And remember that the face can be selected multiple times when you're setting with replacement. The random underscore state parameter ensures reproducibility given the same sample each time the code is run. So let us take a look at our result. This is what we have. One, two, three. Four, five, six, and the face four, five, three, and so on. So we're basically sampling from a population this way. Sometimes it's more natural to sample individuals at random without replacement. This is called a simple random sample. When you set with replacement to be false, it allows you to do that. For example, let us load our data set. Our data set is about actors. We're gonna read our CSV file and display the actor data frame. Let us set a sample size to be five. And then we're gonna take Actors dot sample and set n to be sample underscore size and the replacement to be false. So we are taking samples without replacement. It means that we take a sample and then 
we do the computation and we don't return that sample back into the population. Set the number of actors to randomly select. And when you set replace equal to false, it means that the sampling is done without replacement, meaning once an actor is selected, then they cannot be chosen again for this sample. Very good. If you display the sample actor, this is what you get. So for example, Harrison Ford, the total gross, 4871, the number of movies, 41, average per movie is 118.8. Samuel L. Jackson, with total gross, 4772.8, 69 movies, and average per movie is 69.2. Now let's take a look at sampling from a categorical distribution. When it comes to categorical distribution like color, blood type, we are sometimes interested in working with categorical attributes. We might be looking at whether a coin lands head or tail, or we might be interested in political parties of randomly selected voters. So what are we going to do instead? Let us define a function to sample proportion based on given probabilities. Define sample underscore proportion, have sample size and the proportion. These two are arguments that you pass into your function. And species set it to be red, pink, white, which are basically categorical values. What does it do? It return np.random.choice species, comma, size which is the sample size and p which is the proportions the sample size is the total number of samples you want to generate for example you want to generate 300 in this case proportions is list of probabilities corresponding to each species the function uses np.random.choice to randomly select flowers based on given probabilities P is the proportions, specifies the probability distribution for each flower color. So let us set this probability as 25%, 50%, and 25%. The sample size, as we mentioned, is set to be 300. So we set up the probabilities or proportions, now distribution of sample. Sample underscore proportions, passing sample size and the probabilities. Now, if you display the sample distributions, np.unique sample distribution return underscore counts to be true. This counts the correspondence of each unique flower color in the sample distribution. Very good. The result is going to be sample distribution counts. Pink is 154. Red counts as 64. And white counts as 82.